At a certain point, I felt my sense of self begin to crumble. I looked out and saw myself explode into a cloud of blue post-it notes. If you imagine a manuscript being blown away by the wind, you would run around trying to gather it back together. And, um, and I felt no need, no desire to collect all those post-it notes before they flew away in the wind. It was like, fine, go. <laughs> You've served your purpose. Wowee. Well, in the Netflix docuseries, How to Change Your Mind, author Michael Pollan explores the history and use of psychedelic drugs, among them psilocybin, commonly known as magic mushrooms. Though still illegal almost everywhere, many now see great potential in such substances to address mental health issues. And that's put them on the ballot in Colorado. Barry Peterson reports. America's last great experiment with hallucinogenic drugs in the 1960s launched a counterculture clash of generations. Kids rebelled, parents recoiled. This time around, it's about the quiet of this research clinic at Johns Hopkins University, where psilocybin is tested. Dr. Albert Garcia Romeo is assistant professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences. I think psilocybin seems to be very promising as a potential treatment for a number of different conditions, for depression, for addictive disorders. That would include things like alcohol dependence, cocaine uh, dependence, opioid dependence, tobacco use. Psilocybin, a psychedelic compound found in magic mushrooms, can change a person's awareness of their surroundings and of their thoughts and feelings. Once we get a little bit more data, I think uh, we'll be able to put it out there where people will be able to receive those types of treatments. Are you optimistic this will pass? I'm incredibly optimistic. We have a lot of support across the state. Kevin Matthews isn't waiting for more data. He is Coalition Director of Natural Medicine Colorado that helped get psilocybin's legalization on Tuesday's Colorado ballot. He used psilocybin for his own depression. Folks who experience major depression usually have a lot of regret about the past. And so it, it released the burden of those regrets and enabled me to be completely present with my experience right now, like you and I are talking in this moment. 10 years ago, Colorado voted to legalize marijuana for recreational use. Now there are pot shops across the state. But if voters legalize psilocybin here as it has been in Oregon, people over 21 won't buy it at stores. They could grow small amounts of mushrooms for personal use or go to licensed healing centers to use it with a monitor present. Tracy T. has already taken psilocybin mainstream, studying about it extensively, and then founding Moms on Mushrooms in Denver, where psilocybin is already the lowest priority for law enforcement. Being in the momosphere for 10 years and watching the struggles that women deal with, we come from a culture that expects you to do everything be superwoman and have a smile on your face the entire time. Moms who are struggling with their mental health share stories about how or why tiny amounts of psilocybin called microdoses can help. A lot of moms don't feel present because they feel called to their phones, they're getting text messages all the time, they're working from home, they're raising kids, and our brains feel very fragmented. And psilocybin, especially microdosing, tends to quiet all of that down so that you can focus more and have more clarity and you can just say no to all those external stimuli and just focus on the now. But the effects of microdosing have not been scientifically researched. I mean, it's possible, but it, you know, it's hearsay at this point. It's just purely anecdotal. Psilocybin is a federal schedule one drug like heroin or LSD. But the FDA has now designated psilocybin a breakthrough drug for research purposes. But that does not change Jeff Hunt's opposition to legalization. He is director of the Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University. These kind of drug entrepreneurs are going, well, we can take it to the ballot box and get general people who have no expertise in this to say that it's OK. And then we can eventually commercialize it and make a lot of money on it. We got away from the snake oil salesman. 
And that's why we have the FDA. So in your mind, the process is backwards. Yes, with, with ballot box pharmaceuticals. Yes, absolutely. Magic mushrooms have been used for centuries by indigenous peoples. But some, like Rene Millard Chacon, say the groups trying to make it legal are stealing Native American heritage. They completely go over us and over our sovereignty. So again, they're another predatory capitalistic behavior that is coming to exploit specifically our medicines without any form of restoration or care about the communities that they impact. Now, Colorado voters must decide if they want this ancient treatment for the mental illnesses that ail us in these modern times. For CBS Saturday Morning, Barry Peterson, Denver. It's interesting, the point that was made, the, one of the guy's issues was that they're taking it to voters yes. instead of the FDA. It, it, really interesting. I, I just think it's, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword here. You have drugs on the market like Ritalin and Concerta that help in the same ways, kind of calm people down, allowing them to focus for things like ADHD. But, you know, what's the difference, according to some of these doctors who are claiming, hey... This, it can help. Right. This is also a natural ingredient. They've used it. I've heard a lot of anecdotal stories of um, people dealing with PTSD also as well. Mm -hmm. The idea at least that they can research with it because it's been designated as a breakthrough potential therapy, at least now they can study it as well.